Without any further ado, welcoming in my guest today, Brandon Armstrong, aka B dot A dot, my friend. Thanks for being here. Man, thanks for having me, bro. How you been? I've been good, man. We haven't seen each other since we did some skits in New York. Uh, must have been like over a year ago now. Yeah, yeah, about over. Yeah, over a year. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I was dating Gabby right then. <laughs> I have to ask to give to give a little context to start this off. How how did everything begin for you? Did you start off on Vine? Yes, sir. I started off on Vine like in 2013, 2014. Started on Vine and then I wasn't doing any sports related videos, just all just regular comedy, comedy you see on Instagram and stuff like that, non-sports related. Moved to Instagram, was still doing the same thing. And then I just randomly did that Russell Westbrook video and then that's what just changed everything. So you did a Russell Westbrook video, and then what happened after that? When I did a Russell Westbrook video, um, Brandon Jennings, man, I got to give him all the credit in the world. He's the one that actually retweeted me. He was following me at the time. He retweeted me and introduced me to the basketball world because I didn't really have any, like, basketball fans, you know, like. Gotcha. I had, I had basketball players, you know, just regular hoopers because I, I was still hooping, but I didn't have basketball fans, NBA fans at that. And he introduced me to that, to that world by retweeting me. Like Brandon was a, like a stud then, too. Yeah, yeah. That's when he was still active in the league, man. So, um, like I said, I give all credit. I give a lot of credit to him because without him retweeting that, I wouldn't, you know, it was been a regular video. And then it just, you know, it just went from there. It just changed my whole life. ESPN following went up almost 400,000. So I started, I was like, hey, let me, let me do Tony Allen. Let me do Tim Duncan. Let me do uh, 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 James Harden. And it just went on from there. And then that's when I started doing sports-related comedy videos, different parodies, like Hoopers and Hot Hoopers being layup lines. And it just started a whole new genre. Man, I remember when I saw you on, uh, on Kimmel. Kimmel. And I was like, this dude is funny. What the hell is going on? I didn't understand it. I didn't right. understand it. But I loved it. <laughs> and I saw the videos literally – those videos still get posted on NBA pages today, clips from, from that. What was that experience like? Man, it was dope, man. It was actually a couple days from my Ladies birthday. and gentlemen, welcome birthday. back into the Buster Show. Well, if you're watching this right now, make sure, as YouTube always, YouTube. take a screenshot, upload it on yeah, your thank stories, you. and so tag me so I can share cool, it. But was, today, we have a very special days, guest, Brandon Armstrong, B.A. You might know you him really from his basketball skits. He has nearly 2 million followers on Instagram. He's a very, very smart and diversified creator. Enjoy. It was dope, man. We did the little preset, the little warm-up beforehand with a uh, rehearsal with Jimmy and it was dope, man. Like he's a very cool guy, super down to earth. Uh, yeah, man, it was just a dope ass experience. I never did anything in front of a live studio audience. Man, that was the best. Um, and then how did it progress from kind of that Vine era to, I mean, you know, we'll get into more of what you're doing now. Like one of the things that I'm most impressed, you know, with by you, and I don't see this with a lot of influence, you're very diversified. Yeah. Like everything you have your hands in, and I, I respect that. And I think a lot of influencers can learn from you in that, but we'll get to that kind of stuff. But I, I want to talk about where it kind of went from Vine to, what was the next step? Uh, Vine, Instagram came out with video. Got so it. From Vine, Got it. right to Instagram. And I was still playing ball over in Australia and Spain while doing all this. Um, but yep, for Vine, Instagram and Instagram, first couple months, like I said, I was still doing the regular comedy, a lot of Drake stuff, a lot of blue collar, white collar comedy. And um, yeah, I just randomly did that Russell Westbrook video. It was, uh, it was actually called Russell Westbrook in-game facial expressions versus his player car photo. That's how long the title was because his in-game expressions are all mean and mad, but his player profile pictures like this. So like- So funny. <laughs> you know, freaking hilarious. And then, like I said, that's what the Sports Center is being turned into a Russell Westbrook be like, Russell Westbrook impersonation. So yeah, from, from Vine to Instagram. Did you hear from like, Russ about that, by the way? Huh? Did Russ ever say anything to you about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually met Russ in the middle of the street um, in Westwood. He was coming from a Taylor Swift concert. I was getting into an Uber. This is back in like 2015. I was getting into an Uber and I hear a guy like scream, hey man, you're a funny dude. I turn around and I'm like, thanks. I got my big ass hoverboard. You know, we used to have them hoverboards back then. Yeah. The ones that light the houses on fire. <laughs> right. 
get on my shoulder about to give me an Uber. I'm about to get an Uber, and he's still sitting there. And I turn around, I say, Russ. He said, yeah, man. Go over there. I chatted up with him, chopped it up. He was like, man, you're a funny dude. Keep doing your thing, man. And yeah, man, ever since then, that was probably, that was just, That's I thought about it. it was crazy, like a crazy coincidence. Out of all the people, like the first person I started in the, uh, all this with, I got a chance to meet. And he's my favorite player. That's the best. So you're doing all of this while you're in Australia playing professional basketball. Uh, How do you balance those two things? Um... I mean, it was it was kind of tough uh, just because I, I didn't always have access to a gym and then a gym with the low rim at that. But, um, I mean, we only practiced twice a week, so I had, I had a good amount of free time. And it was, I think it was a pretty healthy balance um, just because I was still playing basketball. And even in my highlights, even some of the games, you could see, like, the impersonation of, like, you can see Steph doing this. You can see the side step like Dame. So I was still able to incorporate that into my content. So that was dope, man. It wasn't, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a distraction and it wasn't like a struggle. Um, I did go like on a little bit of hiatus because I was still, you know, staying serious for ball. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, you got to put out content. Basketball's not forever. You know, you can't play it forever. Totally. No, and I think, you know, one of the most special things about you is that, you know, nobody else was do, like, the, like, it wasn't even an industry. Like sports <laughs> comedy. Yeah, right, Let right, alone right. basketball comedy, sports comedy wasn't a thing because social wasn't what it is now. You mentioned right. Instagram didn't even have video yet. You know, YouTubers weren't even really a thing until the people from Vine left Vine to go to YouTube and then it went on a whole nother trajectory. Um, so you, you, you know, uh, really were, were a pioneer of basketball comedy so it's it's cool to see you know that you know how that has progressed you know to now where you've got like hundreds of people right tiktok forget about it it's vine 2.0 with music um you know, every 15 year old trying to recreate what you did in when you were in australia how do you feel about like this new tiktok era I mean, it's cool, you know, um, it's dope. Like I said, you know, it's dope for, you know, it's able to put, you know, people on, you know, people getting exposure. You know, I'm I'm not really in, in the TikTok like that. I mean, I post here and there very randomly because um, I don't feel like writing everything I'm doing. Like, I have to describe, that's like the thing with TikTok. Like, if I'm doing the Kobe impersonation, I have to put Kobe jersey bite, Kobe fade away, mm -hmm. Kobe... Like I'm, I don't feel like having to type. I don't want to type each description out. Like you need a type person. You need somebody who's just gonna type it out for you. And that's just it's just a waste of time, man. It, it, I, I'm good. I'm good on like I said. TikTok is cool for you know what it's used for. You know, yeah. Out um, voiceovers. Um, yeah, a lot of quick voiceover comedy, and it's a different type of comedy. Is I don't even know what the name of it, but you know, where you're able to take a quote or a song lyric and make it into a, you know, to a joke, which is pretty creative. It's pretty dope. So, um, I mean, I mess with TikTok. It's definitely not like, it's definitely not really like Vine. Only, only, only close to it, like comparison to Vine is the quick f numbers of following you get. Got like it. the the numbers is crazy. Like you can have a 3 million, uh, 3 million view video and like only like, 100, 100k followers or not even tight or not even like 50,000 followers so that's what the similarities to vine was but other than that like nah vine was more of a community man we was we would be on that thing till four or five in the morning we got people roasting each other and people didn't really people like they cared about the content but it was more just of like a video post videos and talk with people like it yeah we all yeah we cared about going viral and being on world star but that came naturally you know so like vine was more of a com community it was more of like it was real, you know? It was totally. You know, like, yeah, I, 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 I definitely hear that. We went to this day offline, so. So in, in the trajectory of, of your story, we're now at, you just joined Instagram. Um, you start posting kind of the same content, I imagine, as Vine, maybe tweak it, optimize it for the platform a little bit. Um, you start building an Instagram following, you know, you branch out to some other platforms. At what point do you decide to start doing stuff like DJing and begin to diversify yourself, you know, beyond, I know you, 
you know, you, you start doing commercial endorsements and that's like the next big step. But beyond that, how does that all kind of take place and progress? I started DJing two years ago in Australia. So, uh, yeah, I had a lot of free time on my hand, like I was saying. And uh, I love music. I make music. I always DJ off my laptop at parties back in Atlanta. And uh, I was like, yeah, let me let me let me go buy some DJ equipment. I did. And yeah, the rest is history. I started in Australia, had my first set on my birthday in 2018 in Australia. So that was pretty dope. And um, just continue to start, you know, building my name. And then when I DJ, after I DJ there, I just started, you know, getting regular gigs out in Australia, you know, DJing every other weekend at um, like a hip hop R&B spot. And, um, you know, brought it back to America, DJing private parties, party, private events. I wasn't ready for the club yet because I'm still using my own controller but then once I got comfortable with the CDJs that comes into that comes with the club yeah I was good from then and now you know I'm still trying to build uh, got a decent name but I can you know I could be way bigger and you know I can learn a lot more so yeah that's what I'm looking forward to just to keep on expanding on this DJ just trying to you know end up in Vegas one of these days. For other influences out there what what is like the importance of diversification with what you do? Never. I mean, it's very important. You shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket because you never know what's going to happen to that basket. I mean, all your eggs can fall out and then where are you going to put them at? Like, I, it's hard to be great at a lot of things, but I can be good as hell at a lot of things. Like, so that's why I'm able to, you know, I like to, and, and at the end of the day, bro, you can make money in multiple ways, you know? You shouldn't just try to, you wanna, every millionaire has, what, 10 different, eight to 10 different uh, revenue sources. Mm -hmm. So that's what I try to do, man. I just try to, and I have fun, you know? I'm not doing it because I do it for the money. I do it because it's fun. I cook. I, I'm a private chef because it's fun. I DJ in clubs because I like curating the vibes. I'm an entertainer. I make music because I like people to, you know, vibe out, you know? I, I do comedy stuff, so because I like to entertain. I like I like I'm an entertainer, man. So um, I think it's very important to you know try to be diverse, even if it's not as much as I do. Just to have two or three extra things that you can do, you know, you can also cross pollinate that, you know, to your original content. So it's, it's different ways you can you can twist it up and make it happen. You're one of the very few people that I've seen on social. I follow a lot of people that you know do a lot of different things and do comedy and you know do sports stuff but you seem genuinely happy which is pretty crazy and i see like you know you got these pool parties going on every day at your house got some quotes and you know nonsense but how like how important is it for you to be happy and how do you see kind of a correlation between that and doing well uh i mean Man, I'm, I wake up every day. Every day I'm already happy to be alive. So it's like, yeah. I don't even got to do with any, anything else. This guy gave me another day to live, so I'm going to take advantage of it. And I'm, yeah, my life is amazing. If I find myself complaining, which I rarely do, then I'm being selfish. Like, yeah, bro, you should. Like, I don't see this as a job. I get to wake up every day. I don't feel like I have to be, you know, be mandatory. It's mandatory for me to go out and make videos. Like, you know, like, nah, to wake up. If I feel like making videos, I go do it. Um, if I need to make videos, I'll do it, you know, or make some type of content. But other than that, man, life is amazing. Like I said, I'm breathing. I'm surrounded by a good group of people. I'm financially stable and I'm building on something bigger. So it's like, yeah, man, like I have no reason to complain. Like life is good and I do it for myself. You know, if maybe if I was doing it for the fame or for the money, like all that is dope. But if I was doing it for that, I don't think I'd be happy. I'm doing it for myself. So like, that's why I think that's why I'm, I am happy because I'm not just doing one thing. I'm like, all right, well, the basketball impersonation is good. Let me DJ. Okay. DJ is cool. Let me start cooking for people. Okay. That's cool. Let me put out a track, you know, different stuff like that. So yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's very important to be happy because I see a lot of these social media cats and you know, they, they put up that image, but then it, behind uh -huh. them, they are yeah, we, we both know enough people. <laughs> Right, their comments they didn't get enough likes on this man i don't care about none of that shit man like i do it for me bro i got videos i got 1.7 million followers i got videos on my page with twenty thousand views and i got videos on my page with three million views bro so it's like i, I upload the content for me like that's what you, that's what you should do 
upload it for you. Don't try to upload it for the, the masses. Yeah. And get and that's, that's how you avoid burnout as well. Right. If you're consistently doing something because you actually enjoy it as opposed to keep put, keeping, you know, continuing putting out things that you, you only do it so that other people enjoy it. Of course, yeah. everybody wants other people to enjoy it. And by default, if you don't get any positive feedback on anything, you're probably not going to continue doing it. But there's a balance to it. And I think for the most part, social media and like the dopamine that comes with getting lots of likes, um, you know, affects it in a really, really negative way as to where you associate, you know, your own happiness with the contrast in between how many likes you get on a great post and a bad post. And I think that's how you both get burnt out really quick and also how you don't stay happy. Um, it's really fast. Like, of course I get hate, I get negativity, but I, I get way more positivity and more positive comments than I do negative. So I don't even focus on negative. Like I hate that whole, if you ain't got no hate, it's really popping. That's stupid. Why would you thrive from hate? That's right. Quote ever in the world. Like, no, you want supporters. You want people that's in your corner. You, if you like, no, if you ain't got no supporters, then something you ain't doing right. If you don't got no people that's liking you, like F haters, bro. Haters don't motivate me. They don't do shit for me. They don't yeah. me. So like, I always focus on the positive stuff, the people that's actually liking my videos, commented on it. And you know. I, I feel the same way. I have a couple of theories. One is that if you don't put out any hate, for the most part, you're not gonna get any back. Um, and then second, I, I just like authentically feel bad for people that do it. Cause I look at myself and I look at you, you could never, like, I could never see you coming on my page telling me that something I do sucks. Cause you're yeah. too worried about what you're, what you're doing yourself. You yeah. know, and I want everybody to be in that position where they're so worried about what they're doing and how they're, you know, throwing their own pool parties and, you know, making whatever that that's their only focus. Right. And they're not gonna hate. They're just not gonna do it. Nobody has time to hate, bro. It, no, like why? It makes no sense. It doesn't do anything, but it doesn't progress you in any type of way. So if I'm not progressing, I ain't trying to do it. So what's your goal? Where where do you want to see yourself in a few years' time? I don't have a cap. I don't, I don't, like I said, I only can take advantage of the day. I don't know if I'm gonna be alive then. I don't know. I don't, only can control it right now. At the end of the day. I just want to be the biggest entertainer of all time. And that's what I'm working on because I entertain in all aspects. I just don't act or just do comedy. Like I feel like an entertainer is something, someone that entertains in different aspects. Like I tell you, like I cook. So I entertain the way where I make you, you know, feel good. You make it, you know, good food. I can fill you up. I, <laughs> I, I DJ, I DJ, I entertain via music, make you feel good in terms of music wise. I play basketball. I entertain, make you, you know, excited about the way I play, and I make you. And I'm a comedian. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an actor. So, I shit. I can make you laugh. Like I entertain in all aspects. So I want to be the biggest entertainer of all time. Perfect answer. Let's talk food for a second. What, you know, last last you can only serve one meal. Uh, to let's say, um, let's say you can only serve Russell Westbrook one meal. What are you giving him? Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's Russ's favorite. That's what. That's his favorite. That's his favorite. That's his favorite dish. He like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So <laughs> I'm gonna keep it simple. I ain't about to try to go all out to try to impress you. Something I don't know you like. What if I don't know? If, like, what if Red of Russ don't eat chicken? What if you're a pescatarian? What if you don't like beef? What if you don't like pork? But one thing I do know you like, I can make him a bomb ass peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I add some honey on top of the peanut butter, cut off the crust, and there you go. Oh, Man. crust. You know, We'll go for 30. Yeah. Why is that so popular? I never understood the, the logic of this behind that. First ain't really the most appetizing part, you feel me? Like, eh, they ain't soft. You might as well just cut them pieces off, boom. Serve, serve them to the dog, go get them to some birds. <laughs> how, how healthy would you say that you eat? Um, I mean, I don't eat beef or pork. So, I mean, I think I'm healthy-ish. Like, I mean, I cook. I probably cook the majority of the time. I, if I do eat out, it is, you know, I'm postmating something, but not much, not really. Sometimes I am if I'm lazy or if I'm super high later on at night and I don't feel like eating. I mean, cooking. Makes sense. Other than that, uh, I think I'm pretty healthy. Uh, health, like I say, healthy-ish. Like, of course, like I love chicken yeah. wings. I'm the same way. 
I love chicken wings. <laughs> I cook it, but you know, not deep fried at least. Um, uh, yeah, other than that, I don't really don't fry many foods. Uh, I made some fried shit. I made some fried chicken last night, but it was like a Parmesan Jiffy cornbread batter fried chicken it was for a Parmesan. But that's yeah, yeah, I think I'm good. Yeah, I don't drink soda unless it's like you know ginger ale. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I guess been, yeah, I've been super fascinated lately. I've tried cutting out sugar almost completely. Great, great shift. I can run like two times as far. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing that's really felt when you're able to see the difference in the in your diet. Like, what? Totally. What is, you've done a lot of DJ gigs now. What are some of the craziest things you've ever seen go down in a club? Um, like while you're up there, do you ever see like people like, do people, I'm sure people try to like climb on stage, jump off, like. Nah, um, it, it, a lot of people always try to get a DJ booth. I mean, I think it was the craziest probably when I DJed at this club out here and Waka Flocka, Waka Flocka was there. And oh. it was the most, the most energized I've ever seen in the club. Like I've never seen like an actual celebrity go from section to section in the club and perform oh. songs and get it and get it super hyped. That was like super wild. Cause that was my first time actually spinning for a, um, for an artist, like, you know, for, uh, for Waka. So that was, that was super dope because we're both from Atlanta. And, uh, and his energy is unmatched cause he's like super energized, bro. And that was just dope. I've never seen the whole club look like a concert. And it was, yeah, it was lit. That's probably the craziest, yeah, the craziest thing I, I've been a part of. Like, yeah, that was different. That makes sense though, that like he was going from section. To, I mean, that's just a different level of energy that you're gonna bring to the table. Not everybody's doing Tory that. Not doing that. Tory Lane, maybe Tory. Nah, I doubt it. Nah, hell no, nah, Tory ain't doing that. No, 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 like big time super artists I know is going from like section to section to section, unless it's like, you know, I don't know, Juice World, maybe, you know, uh, RP. Or I'm just trying to think of like one of those super hype artists, like maybe Travis Scott. I can see Travis Scott climbing shit. He climbs a lot of stuff, but I don't know. Sometimes they get in that, you know, that superstar mode. Waka's never like that. Waka's all, Waka wants to be treated just like everybody else, like a regular person, bro. So yeah, Waka That's ain't awesome. match dog, like by far. Who are your favorite artists right now? Um, I like Tory Lanez, uh, my guy, RJ. He's a, a Phoenix-based uh, artist. Um, who else I like, man? I like a lot of R&B. So I like, um, I like Kalani's new album. I like um, Janae. Man, yeah, so them Tory Lanez, Black, J. Cole. Yeah, them my peoples. I like Drake too, but Drake got complacent. So he doesn't really work. Almost he doesn't work as hard, but his music isn't as great as it used to be. Back when he, back before he was, you know, the best artist in the world. But yeah. uh, it's Drake is still cool. You know, Drake, he's, he's a great artist, but his music ain't really hit me like they used to. Of course, some um, here and there, but. Well, nah. I think as like, you know, as people, like as he became the biggest star in the world and got detached from reality, slowly but surely, that's almost bound to happen. He doesn't have to do much. You know, he can do less and he can still pop, so. Yeah. Uh, that's dope, though. That's, that's a dope level to be, but it's also it's always good, you know. If you could spin yeah. for anybody, who would you want to spin for? If I could spin, ooh, man, that's a good one, bro. Uh, Lil Baby. That's probably my favorite. I'm lying. Lil Baby. Lil Baby's my favorite artist out right now. He's on fire right now. What? Yep. From uh, this year, bro. <laughs> from the same hood, from Atlanta. Yeah, Lil Baby. If I could spin for Lil Baby. Yeah, Lil Baby. Hell yeah. That'd be crazy. What? Um, oh now, if you could go back, how old are you now? Uh, turned 30 yesterday. Happy belated again. That's a big one. That's exciting. Oh. Um, if you could go back and tell your 18 year old self one thing, what, what would you go back and tell yourself? Uh, get in the gym more when I go to college because we had, we had unlimited access to the gym and I, we, we never really, we used it here and there, but I wish I would have just, I wish I would have gotten to the gym more and worked on my game a little bit more. Other than that, nothing, nothing really. It's nothing that I'd be like, yo, do this differently. 
like, nah, because I wasn't expecting any of this. I thought I was going to be overseas playing ball professionally. I wasn't expecting to be no social media person type ish. Like, nah, never that. But, um, but I mean, I was already kind of like popped off on social media. Like back in the day, like back in when I was in high school in 2007, 2008, I made this song called Crank That Spider-Man and made a video to it, 7 million, 8 million views on YouTube. And I'm freaking, you know, this is before YouTube was like super popular. Ended up getting a record deal, made like 30 bands from iTunes. So like I've always been like connected to social media regardless. Like, yeah, even on Facebook, I was pretty like popular on Facebook with my friends. I would make funny little Facebook videos. We'd be rapping. We'd do shout outs. It was crazy in college. Like we had a lot of content. I was always the guy with the camcorder recording everything. And it's crazy how it just, you know, translated into, you know, what I'm doing now. So yeah, if I was 18, I'd just say, man, get your ass in the gym or bro, take advantage of that shit. By, by my, so you were mentioning doing these Facebook streams when you were in college. What, what was in those? And I'm curious, cause I started doing everything that I'm doing through Facebook live as well. So I'm just curious kind of what that was. Oh man, it was just a whole bunch of just freestyle videos. My guys would sit down just like this. We'll put on a beat and we'll just start freestyling, bro. We had bro, so many just, so many crazy songs I got on Facebook. Me and my me and my peoples from like from a long time ago, bro. Like high school all the way to college, and it just it was to the point where my uncle would like tell me to delete those videos. You're gonna lose your scholarship. I said, Carlton, I'm not I'm not big time. Like they don't my, the coaches don't even check none of this stuff. Like they don't know anything about all this. You me like this. Like now, of course, the coach is checking because they have more you know um, access to it and social media is more bigger. But back then, like. Heck no, man. They, no. It was just me. It was a lot of stuff. Me filming, you know, filming my basketball team. We actually did an and one mixtape that I edited. Um, we did a, apparently our dorm was haunted. So I took our camcorder. It was a, it was a co-ed dorm. So the boys and boys and girls basketball team, we would go look for ghosts. Man, it was crazy, bro. It was just different forms of content. It's just me in college having a great time. And a lot of Two things off of that. One, it's so obvious just hearing you talk about that, why you were able to do well in what you were doing afterwards, because you know, most kids, especially at that time, aren't editing their college mixtape while they're on the you know, team. Like, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. It's very obvious. Like it, it's easy to put the piece together. But my, my question here is, what do you think is going to happen to college sports now, you know, especially with – the big players, you know, especially at, you know, a lot of these major schools, some of them are now able to get money from endorsements. Some of them don't even want to play. They want to go to uh, HBCUs and they want to just play there. Like I saw Mikey Williams, who's one of the top um, ranked players, uh, you know, up and coming class. What do you think is going to happen to college basketball in general? Well, I mean, that sounds good when Mikey says this is my little bro. And uh, shout out to Mikey for even that statement, you know, put this recognition to all the HBCUs. I'm from the South, so it's a lot of them, but Mikey's not going to college. Uh, <laughs> you know, he'll, go to the, he'll go to the league, he'll go to the G League, or he'll go to the NBA. Uh, yeah. yeah, the NCAA, uh, only ones I feel bad for him, it was just number of karma. Uh, I mean, y'all better start paying the players. Well, you feel me? Like, you got to start, you got to give the players something, man. Like, you're using them for their likeliness in terms of jersey sales, putting ticket sales in the seats, views from the television. Like, y'all making so much money from these players and they're not getting anything. They're barely able to eat. I mean, yeah, they are at, you know, at a high major Division One college, but that don't mean that, you know, they, they have enough money to, you know, eat every what they want. You feel me? Like, they got to go to that cafe every day. They're not trying to spend that money at, to the, at that Chick-fil-A lady. They're trying to save that money, you know? So, um, yeah, the NCAA, I'm, honestly, bro, the person that gets all this credit, bro, that needs to deserve most of the credit is LeVar Ball, bro. LeVar Ball was doing this two, three years ago with his kids when he was like, no, let's start our own league. We're going to pay these kids money, and we're going to let them play ball professionally. That's basically the G League just took a page out of his book. Let me, okay, well, let's lower the age limit, and let's offer these – Big time high school players that bag. They don't need to go to college for what? They're not gonna make no money there. Come make some money. It's the same thing LeVar Ball was doing when he did with LaMelo, sent him over to Australia, bro. Everything is coming back tenfold for him. I doubt, I don't think his kids will end up on the same team like he says one day, but all his kids will end up in the NBA or get an opportunity. 
I think Jello, you know, he signed with the OKC, uh, the Thunder Blue, their G League team, and you never know. He's a great shoot. Jello can shoot that thing. You never know. He might get a little 10 day. And so at the end of the day, man, uh, kids are 18, man. Go get that money. Go get that money. Go feed your family. I'd rather train with NBA level trainers and players and get my body ready versus, you know, going to college and, you know, just learning a system. And yeah, we're still getting better, but I'm not getting that knowledge that I would get from that NBA level trainer. He would tell me stuff about the NBA, the, the NBA level that I'll be ready for when I go to the next level versus in college. Like if I'm not no top 15 athlete, like, you know, we're going to be there for a couple of years and yeah, yeah. Go go get that money, man. Why play basketball and get money? That's a college is cool though. College is cool. Like college is dope. I seen Cade Cunningham. I kind of for him because you know he's the number one player in the nation, signed with uh, Oklahoma State. But they apparently they're coaching some type of stuff, and they're not able to participate in any tournament. No NCAA, no NIT, none of that. And he actually turned five hundred thousand dollars down to go to the G League. So I'll, it'll be interesting to see what he does now. Like. Yeah. yeah, it's super interesting. I, I never understood why they reversed the rule in the first place. Uh, you know, obviously LeBron and, you know, a lot of these guys came straight from whether it be, you know, high school or overseas at the same age. You know, they still can't over from overseas, but from high school, I, I never understood why they reversed that in the first place. Um, I mean, of course, it was politics in terms of they wanted kids to go to college, but it's also high school players that wasn't ready for the NBA applying for the draft and once you apply for the draft you already lose your college eligibility now they changed it if you apply for the draft even if you're in college if you you know apply for the draft without an agent without one of the major agents don't get drafted you still can come back to college which is super dope i think that is probably the best thing the ncaa has done but back then they stopped it because it was a lot of high school players not ready got it for the draft and then they go they don't make the team and now you know they're pretty effed up, no knowledge, no degree, you know, so, yeah, but I'm, I'm glad, I mean, it, people are more knowledgeable now, we have more, we have different system, we have more uh, access to more things to help kids out, so I'm glad they, you know, lowered it to, I think it's 19, yeah, now. yeah 19, or at least one year in college, so, all these kids are already, you know, getting held back purposely, or going to prep schools, you know, for that year, so they can go ahead and go to the league. So exactly. they know what they're doing. Them coaches know exactly what they're doing. Speaking of the league, it's supposed to be returning at the end of July. Do you have a favorite team? I assume you're a Hawks fan by default. I don't have a favorite team at all. Got it. Team. Uh, I'm cool with a lot of players, so I just like to see good basketball. Agreed. I like to see really good basketball. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know if they're going to come back or not. It, all the rules is crazy. I've seen they just came out with some freaking ring. They can do, they yeah. can do, they can, or a ring, or uh, 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 yeah, a corona ring. But I'm like, bro, that's like that's a tracking device to see if they're gonna leave around. It's crazy, man. It's it's a lot of stuff going on with this whole bubble situation. Um, I know they're gonna have you know all the amenities they need, but you know these guys like to go out, man. Like they like to you know get out, get away, go to dinner, or you know go bowling, or go to a hookah lounge, or oh, type yeah. it. Did you watch the last dance at all? Yeah, yeah, I watched it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like how Rodman, for him to be successful, he had to go to Vegas. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It made him a better player. You got to let people be themselves. Otherwise but I understand the whole corona, you know, the whole corona thing going on. So that's pretty much why. But it's like, I don't know, man. They're going to find a way. They're going to find a way. Well, so many, I don't know. It, this will be interesting, bro, because I heard that if you do break the rules or leave the campus, that you have to be quarantined for 10 to 14 days and you will lose money from those uh, from those games you miss. You won't get paid. That's a hell of a risk to go out. But you see, but you see the team that's already already headed down there, the Toronto Raptors. They like, we don't care, we good. Ain't, ain't much, they like, it ain't much to do in Toronto anyway, so let's go ahead and go. Like they're the whole team is already going down there to start training early and practicing. So they're already like, we we playing, we want to play. And I think that's the team that's going to come out the East. If the Raptors went back-to-back -back without Kawhi, that wow. would be... That'd be sick. That'd be sick. Back-to-back, be... -back, but I think they'll be that team to come out to, to make it out the East just because they are a complete team. And then who do you have, LeBron coming out of the West or... Lakers. 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 L
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Kawhi, them, Kawhi and Kawhi and Paul George don't have enough. They don't have enough games under their belt for me. Play to get play together. When they do play, it's more like pick up. Like, all right, your turn. You go. Okay, now your turn. And Paul George is a little bit inconsistent for me in terms. Of, I think Kyle George can be of a. I think he can be a monster. He can be a beast. But he settles for that jump shot a lot. And he shoots like what nine to ten threes a game, and you know I mean that's what I see. That's what the league is going to. But Kawhi don't shoot that many. That mid range with Kawhi is different. But when Paul George is on, he's a top. He's a top twelve player when he's when he's on. But I don't know. They don't have enough. They're, they're the deepest team in the league by far. Uh, but they don't have enough games played together. They don't have enough chemistry. You know, it's tough. Yeah. All that low management, like yeah. you got it together. That's Kawhi. why one and eighty are damn near best friends. On the court. Kawhi would have to carry so hard. Yes. Yes. That would be crazy. Yeah. So um, are there any other find it? They find it. If they click, they'll be scary. Cause their team is deep, bro. When you can name damn near one through eight players, one of the eight one through damn near one through nine of the players, that's that's something. Yeah, that's a very valid point. Um yeah, man, I'm just excited for sports to be back. That's yeah. going to be a game changer for, I, I think, a lot of people, if it happens, hopefully it does. <laughs> it's a lot going on, man, just outside of the corona stuff. Like, yeah, it's – hopefully so, man. Hopefully um, so, it's basketball. Where can people – if you're if you're older than 21, where can people find you DJing? First question. Um, well, shoot, uh, out here in Arizona, I'm at a this club called Pretty Please International, which is old town in general. It's in Scottsdale. Um, you can catch me DJ and shoot, if I'm in Vegas, anywhere. Um, yeah, it'll be all on my social media, man. When I do DJ, I promote the heck out of it. I have my own little DJ page, DJ No Daddy. So, um, yeah, man. Yeah. If you're out here in Arizona, man. In, in the Phoenix guys, the area you want to see me DJ, man, come to Pretty Please. You catch me at Intel, Oasis. Yeah, man, all that, man. All that. And then all of your social handles are at b.a.5? Yep. Everything, all that. E-Harmony, um, Christian Mingle, at b.a.5. All that, man. Jewish Jump Off, Muslim Meetup. All of that, man. <laughs> at b.a.5, man. My man, thank you for doing this. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. This is dope, brother. I appreciate you. All right, sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Peace. Buster, go next. <laughs>